Hi, I'm Everett and welcome back to the shop. Um, progress on the shaper has been a bit slow the last couple weeks here between, um, well, some of the family and friend projects coming in and we've had family visiting. Um, one of the projects was that uh, set of uh, rollers for the hose reel. Uh, that's the last video I put up. But some of the projects I just had to get dealt with done uh, quickly out the door. Uh, so all I did was just take pictures in the process. Uh, I'll put a couple pictures up here of what they were. One of them was this one. It's a signpost stand for my buddy's wedding. They were using it for part of the decoration. It's a chunk of exhaust pipe welded to a uh, disc from a disc cultivator. And uh, it came out okay. It was just a bit tricky because it was an unknown carbon steel or alloy steel probably disc and an, uh, sta some sort of unknown stainless exhaust pipe. So that was a bit tricky to weld. Uh, as well, there was a couple brackets needed for a tent, so I brought one of the brackets home and I wound up making a uh, couple new brackets for it. Uh, and uh, as well, there was uh, my mom and dad came to visit, and my mom's still involved with the local weaving and fiber arts guild in her town, so they needed some of these things called heddle hooks. Uh, these things are used for setting up a loom and you know running strings here, there, and everywhere, and they have to be really fine with a hook. Well, it turns out that uh, windshield wiper stiffeners were the perfect size to bend and cut a hook in and jam into a handle, so we uh, made a bunch of those. And finally, my Uncle Mark needed a uh, Lovejoy bushing adapted to the front end of this one motor that used to work on a hot tub. So it had to, we had to cut a keyway and make a few adjustments on some things. And so I made the keyway, it's an eighth inch wide, and uh, put a little flat on the other 90 degrees off of it so that it uh, grabs on the uh, 90 degree offset uh, set screw. So. So that's what I've been up to the last little while, and uh, <laughs> needless to say, the shaper kind of got put on pause for a while. So anyway, we're now back at the shaper again, and uh, what we need to do now is make the pulley to go on the motor. Now the pulley that came with the motor was just a, a single, you know, single groove hardware store variety one. The motor's not original, it's, uh, the original one was a 440 volt three phase unit, this one's 125 uh, single phase. And um, so this, would, this is close to the right size for the low speed, but I want to have both speeds on the motor because I have both speeds in the transmission, so that gives me the four original speeds. The thing is, the motor that came on this thing originally uh, was 960 RPM at 50 Hertz. The motor I have is 1725 RPM. So very thankfully, Neil from his channel, Neil9, um, he's got a shaper very similar to mine, and uh, he did a bunch of work to rebuild and work on his, but his motor's still original, which was really handy. Uh, he was kind enough to take some measurements for me and send them to me, and so what I did was I did the math, and again, I converted from the metric he gave me to Imperial, because that's what I have for tooling. Um, but yeah, what I wound up doing was going to the CAD program, and that's where we go. We got ourselves a, a diagram for a pulley. All the measurements, uh, being a smaller pulley and double checking the uh, B pulley shiv basic dimensions, 34 degree included angle between the walls. So with that, I also needed a piece of material. It just so turned out that this lump of scrap that I had in the bin there from some, you know, again, from scrap metal bin somewhere, uh, I'll be able to get my double pulley out of this unit. Uh, holding it's going to be a little bit of a trick, but that's okay. Uh, we'll figure out a way to do it. Now, if I were starting with a larger piece of stock, I would probably hold it by the bigger end in the chuck and work this end first. So it's going to be a little bit awkward as far as working around it and machining it, but this is the way we're going to have to do it. I have plenty of extra material on the smaller face here because, uh, you know, it's only coming up to about there. So I'm going to grip it on this side and then We'll support this back end here when we're doing anything really serious. So 
So now it's time to center drill this and start drilling it. Okay, we're going to start by center drilling. Now because I want to get this hole started straight, that is a, an 11 30 seconds uh, a short carbide drill bit. So that was a carbide bit, drill bit. Now we're going to use a uh, high speed steel drill bit. Now there's no real reason to have to make this a through hole. The part itself is just under two inches long and uh, well the hole is now drilled two and a half inches deep, a little over. I also, as far as uh, drilling and some of this work is concerned, I don't have a 39 64th drill bit. I do have a 37 64th but not a 39 64th. So we're going to use this to start with and go from there. Let's do 220, see how it likes it. Alright, now the hole we just drilled is actually 2 and 5 eighths deep. So that means that as far as not bottoming the reamer out, I should be able to just go in 2 and a half inches and not have to worry about bottoming it. Oh man, I tell you, sometimes... Sometimes it's hard to get time in the shop like you hope. Um, I kid you not, this piece has been chucked up here with the hole drill in it for almost a week. And uh, yeah, so I finally have a chance to get back at it. Uh, last time we was at it, <laughs> last time we were at it, the uh, hole was drilled up to 37 64ths. It's the next biggest drill bit I have before I hit uh, 5 eighths. I need a nice clean 5 eighths hole to fit on the shaft of the motor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a couple quick boring passes with this dinky little boring bar. It'll probably scream like a banshee, but such is life. Right now it's at 577 for a bore size. I'm just going to take 40 thou out of it, and that'll leave us another 8 thou or so for the reamer. So roughly in that neighborhood. I don't know if you can read it there, it says 615, 615 and a half, 614. Again, digital calipers, especially the cheaper ones, are, you know, close. So that still gives us about 10 thousandths or so to ream with. My hole is just a hair over two and a half inches deep. So if I just go two and a half inches in with my reamer, I should be safe. Lots of lube. And here goes. Right, I think that should have it. However, proof is in the pudding. I don't have any sets of gauge pins, but I do have a 5 8 inch end mill. Oh, and if I push it in quickly and release, we're starting to compress air, so I'll call that close enough. I like it. What I'd like to do now is chamfer this end with a little wider chamfer than usual. That way I can use the live center in this end to support the material as I uh, start machining the two features here, the, the two grooves at the right diameters. So we'll get set up for that. So I've set the compound to, uh, well, basically 30 degrees, which makes a 60 degree included angle, which will work for the uh, live center. Now for what it's worth, this little taper here, this little chamfer, is not going to cause a problem to, uh, to this thing as far as its functionality. Um, it's certainly not going to cause a problem as far as being, um, you know, shaft contact or for cutting the uh, cutting the keyway with the brooch so it'll be fine 
the uh, diameter here needs to be 2.61 inches. It's roughly 2.74 at the moment, so we need to take about 130 thousandths off of it. Touched off. Ah, uh, yes, the bird's nest. I'm probably not using the ideal geometry for this material at the moment, but such is life. You just try not to get shrapnel down your shirt. 2.609 and a half is what the dial or indicator says. So, <laughs> take it for what it's worth. So that journal outside diameter is complete. Um, give me a moment here. I need to see what I can find for tooling to be able to cut in here. I don't have a whole lot of left uh, left hand cutting bits. Let's see what I have. Well, I didn't have a whole lot for uh, left hand turning uh, tool holders. So what I do have though is uh, this one here. It comes from a set that my buddy Cal gave me a while ago. Um, because of the proximity to the chuck jaws here, it's not going to be super ideal, but it's the best I'm going to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably need to do it in two stages. I'll carve away over here till I get down to the right diameter and then bring uh, bring it up to the shoulder um, and just sort of blend it together. The center portion here is going to get grooved anyway so if there's a blend line it doesn't matter. Yeah we'll just we'll make do with this. Uh, it turns out that uh, this journal here is actually a little wide yet so I can I can peel away from this shoulder this way. Um, it's actually got to be 940 thousandths not one inch 120 so that buys me a bit more space too. Anyway, well, I guess I'll just start carving away. This journal here has to go from the, whatever it is, uh, 2 inch um, 167 or whatever it is, has to come down to 1 inch 930 thousandths. So, let's we'll see how this works. Okay, I'll try that angle. We'll see how much it vibrates on the, on the compound. Well, oh boy, well, that sucked. I don't know how much either caught that. All right, well, 1.992, another 60 thousandths to go. Well, that kind of sucked. That was a decent camera. Man, is this stuff ever stringy. If I had to make a guess, I, if I had to make a bet, I would say this is Note that I will never use a lathe on a file without a handle on it, and I'm, I am right-handed, but I do file left-handedly on the lathe. So everything on here is in relation to this front face. So what we should be able to do is use our fat sharpie marker to lay uh, black marks on here, and then uh, we should be able to lay out where the grooves go. They're not that expensive. I don't know what took me so long to get one. I need to make a line. Uh, 
like I say, they're just they're very rough marks as far as uh, where the where the groove has to be. Now these two lines here will indicate where the tops of the uh, two walls of the V wind up. I want to carve the groove in the center first and then cut the walls to suit. Now that groove in the center will be 325 thousandths from this face and 625 from this face will be the um, that'll be the width of that groove. It's about 300 thousandths wide in the base of a B pulley groove. So I got set up here with the parting blade. Um, what I'm going to do is, as I say, I have to take it down to depth in the center. Um, center depth is, uh, well, the outer diameter here is 2.61, inner diameter is 1.53. That means I have to take 1.08 off, give or take, uh, 1 inch 80. So divided by 2, that's 540 thousandths. I'm just going to touch off here with the, uh, once I touch off, then I'll set my um, my cross slide dial and uh, we'll just go from there. I'm not going to part straight in. I'm going to cut a little bit and then work to the side and back and forth. Hopefully that will lessen the chance of this parting blade dying an early death. Uh, parting on this thing is always a bit of a trick, so let's see how this works. I have cut pulleys on the lathe before. Um, again, uh, it's just a bit tricky to try to get a solid mount to be able to do use the parting bit. So. Here's hoping this works. I used, I did the other ones in a different manner because I wasn't using such a short piece of material. I guess it's what I get for trying to be cheap and use up small bits of stock. So you can see the beginnings of the of the groove happening here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and I'll bring you back in uh, once we're pretty much down to depth. I'm sure you don't want to watch all this. And because this is a forming operation, we're going to go nice and slow. Well, here it goes. What I'm doing is I'm going in steps. I carve in a little bit and then move over. And then uh, what that does is that lessens the length of uh, material being cut on the on the uh, tool bit edge here. So you can see how this, I'm working to the right a little bit. What's that, that that's gonna do is that'll create a little step further in. So now as I crank inward, it's only cutting on a part on part of the uh, cutting edge. There we go. Now it's starting to cut on more of it. So that's increasing our required pressure, so we'll back it off. A little bit of oil. Now, I know that a lot of you are just going to be, you know, wondering to yourselves why I didn't do this in the same manner that uh, Mr. Pete did. Um, a couple of reasons. Uh, well, three actually. This form tool I have from making a few other pulleys before because I've made B pulleys before. Granted, I was doing it with stock that was sitting out here and easier to get at in the whole nine yards. So, I mean, it was, it was a little different setup that way. Um, Partly also just because I'm trying to use up some scrap, I'm so close to the chuck that I'm eh, I'm kind of iffy about trying to get this thing set up um, angle-wise as far as using the compound. And I mean, the uh, and, and the other reason is um, I don't have a mandrel. Uh, Mr. Pete used a mandrel for his, so that way he could just take it and flip it over, leave the compound set and stuck out here. I don't have a mandrel, so yeah, 
I'll just use it. I just did it this way. I've made pulleys this way before. It takes a little bit longer, but it does work. So anyway, I know some of you are going to be, you know, scratching your heads wondering why I did it, chose to do it this way. And that's why. Um, as far as, uh, you know, as far as the uh, witness marks here, because I'm starting to lose my Jiffy marker, yes, I should have used the uh, Dachem Blue. It's a little more resilient. Um, what it did was it just made a carve over to the line there, so I know where I need to stop now. I'm going to do the same thing over here, and then that, I'm just going to carry on finishing out the groove. All right, we're just about there. Just about to the bottom of the groove. I think that's pretty much there. After a bit more shaving, because again, it's, I only had to take a few more thousandths off the, off of either side, and that now has about the same fit as it did in the uh, factory pulley that, uh, well, came with the motor, even though it's not the original motor that came with the shaper. 34 degree sides. Uh, I can feel a bit of a sharp edge on these lips here, but uh, once I take those off, it'll be golden. So now I'll do the smaller diameter groove. Um, You've seen me do this one. You don't need to see me do two of them. Um, once I'm done this one, then we'll cut it off and move on to the next step. So anyway, this is the uh, aluminum pulley that came with the motor. A little bit of stick out there, not a whole lot. We have pretty much the same profile now on both of our grooves on this pulley. So we're going to call that done as far as forming the grooves. Uh, what I need to do now is get this uh, cut off, or well, I'm actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sharp edges off these corners. We'll get it cut off and then we'll face it. I'm not even going to try parting this thing in this lathe right now. I've been having enough grief with the parting tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out some way of cutting this off in the bandsaw. I'll do that off camera so the sketchiness isn't really, you know, broadcast and, you know, I don't want to be a bad example too much. And then I'll bring you back in when we're ready to face the other side. There we go. Yeah, not spectacular, but it'll work. There we are. There. Yes, I cheated. Give it a little better surface finish on the end. All right. Hooray. Yeah, not too much dingage on the outside wall from the jaws. Good. There we go. Uh, three steps remain. Broach the uh, keyway. It's a 3 16 keyway. And then I need to drill and tap for a 5 16 set screw. Now, although the pulley is not completed at this point, I think I'm going to have to call it here. Uh, otherwise, the video is going to get extremely long because there's a fair amount more work yet to do. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll have part B up soon too. Um, it'll have the uh, making of the uh, broach bushing that we need for this as well as the set screw and installation on the motor. So otherwise, uh, hope you found it interesting so far. Um, I know that I have ways that I do things that others may disagree with, and that's fine. But, uh, you know, hopefully you found it interesting at least. So, otherwise, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for subscribing if you do, and uh, we'll see you next time for part B.